There is one constant in the night sky, unchanging, ever-present, the moon. It has no voice, and yet it speaks to all of us. It has no breath, and yet it shapes life on earth. It governs the tides, influences weather, and even guides the rhythm of sleep and growth in living things. Before cities, before books, before recorded history, humans looked up and saw it. A brilliant glowing disk that changed shape and followed us wherever we walked. It lit ancient paths, inspired stories, and served as one of the first clocks humanity ever knew. But beyond its quiet beauty lies complexity. How did it get there? Why does it always show us the same face? What secrets lie hidden on the side we never see? The moon is not just a rock. It's not just a satellite. It is a celestial monument, a companion through time. As technology grants us the ability to see it more clearly, we begin to realize something. The more we learn about the moon, the more we learn about ourselves. This is more than a film. This is a journey to the surface of a world that feels familiar, but is still waiting to be truly discovered. Section 1. Ancient Light The moon's light is not its own. It is borrowed, reflected sunlight bouncing off its dusty surface. But that light is powerful. It has shaped human history for millennia. The moon has been a canvas for stories, symbols, gods, and dreams. To the Greeks, it was Selene, the goddess who rode her silver chariot across the night. To the Egyptians, Khonsu, the moon god who guided travelers. To the Chinese, it is Chang'e, who lives eternally among its shadows. For thousands of years, the moon has been a spiritual object. Its phases govern planting and harvest. It marked calendars and guided sailors across oceans. Entire festivals and rituals revolved around its glow. Its cycle, from new to full and back again, represents rebirth, transformation, and time itself. Unlike the stars, the moon felt personal. It was close enough to study, bright enough to affect tides, and mysterious enough to hold stories. Today, with science and satellite data, we see the moon more clearly than ever. But that clarity doesn't remove the wonder. If anything, it deepens it. The same light that guided our ancestors now illuminates our cameras. Section 2. Collision and Creation Long before life ever took hold on Earth, there was a collision. A planet-sized object, known as Theia, struck the young Earth with unimaginable force. From this violent impact, debris was launched into orbit. Molten rock, iron, dust, magma. This chaos, circling Earth in a halo of destruction, eventually began to form something new. Within weeks, this debris gathered and cooled, drawn together by gravity. A sphere took shape, a second world, our moon. Scientists call this the giant impact hypothesis. And while some mysteries remain, this origin story helps explain many things. Why the moon's composition is so similar to Earth's mantle. Why it's relatively large compared to its host planet. And why Earth has the stability that allowed life to thrive. Without the moon, Earth's tilt would wobble dramatically over time. Our seasons would be chaotic. Climate shifts could have prevented the rise of complex life. Instead, the moon steadies us. It slows our rotation. It locks our tides. It gives rhythm to the planet. So when we look at the moon, we are not just looking at a companion. We're looking at a piece of Earth, torn away, yet always tethered. A fragment of our own origin, forever circling above. Section 3. Lunar Landscape At first glance, the moon looks still, lifeless. But in that stillness lies a breathtaking story, written not in ink, but in stone. With no atmosphere, no wind, and no rain, the moon does not erode like Earth. Its surface doesn't change quickly. What happened a billion years ago still looks fresh today. Every crater tells a story. Some were created by asteroids the size of cities, others by smaller cosmic debris. Their walls are steep, their floors are filled with impact melt, and their age spans billions of years. Then there are the seas, vast, dark plains called Maria. They aren't filled with water, but with ancient lava flows that once oozed from the moon's core. These plains are smoother than the highlands and stretch across thousands of kilometers. Look closely and you'll find mountains taller than Everest, ridges that twist like scars, basins so deep they could swallow entire cities. What seems like a lifeless rock is actually a frozen chronicle of time, a surface sculpted not by weather, but by impact, heat, and silence. Here, 
The ground beneath your feet is older than any fossil, older than any ocean, older than life on Earth. The moon is not just a mirror in the sky, it is a museum, untouched by time. Section 4. The far side, for most of human history, half the moon remained invisible. We only ever saw one face, its near side, locked in place by a phenomenon called tidal locking. This means that as the moon orbits Earth, it rotates at just the right speed to keep the same hemisphere facing us at all times. But what lies on the other side? The so-called dark side of the moon? In truth, it isn't dark at all. It receives just as much sunlight as the side we see. But it was dark to us, hidden, mysterious, and unknown until 1959, when the Soviet Luna 3 spacecraft took the first grainy images. What we discovered shocked scientists the far side is rougher, more heavily cratered, lacking in the smooth maria that dominate the near side. Why? It may be due to how heat dissipated during the moon's formation, or because the near side's crust is thinner, allowing ancient lava to spread more easily. Today, thanks to satellites and missions like China's Chang'e 4, we are beginning to explore the far side more directly, and it holds promise. In the deep, permanently shadowed craters near the lunar south pole, we've found ice, water. In the vast silence of the far side, the future of lunar exploration may quietly be taking shape. Section 5. Footsteps and Flags On July 20th, 1969, humanity changed forever. For the first time, a human being stepped onto the surface of another world. Neil Armstrong's words echoed across the globe. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But what the world didn't hear was the eerie stillness that surrounded him. No wind, no rustle, only the crunch of boots and lunar dust that had never known life. The Apollo missions, from 1969 to 1972, landed 12 men on the moon. They drove rovers across its surface, deployed scientific experiment, collected over 800 pounds of moon rock. These missions gave us more than just data, they gave us perspective. Photographs like Earthrise and the Blue Marble showed us our planet as a tiny sphere, suspended in the void. No borders, no conflict, just home. Today, those landing sites remain untouched. The footprints are still there, preserved by the moon's lack of atmosphere. The American flags planted in the lunar soil? Some have fallen, bleached white by the sun's unfiltered radiation. Others still stand, flapping in a vacuum that has no wind. The legacy of Apollo isn't just historical, it's human. Proof that when we dream boldly, we can walk among the stars. Section 6. The Moon Today Today, we know more about the moon than ever before. Dozens of spacecraft have orbited, landed, or crashed intentionally to study its surface. Rovers have scanned its soil. Satellites have mapped its gravity field and temperature. High-definition cameras, like the one used to film this footage, bring its surface closer than we've ever imagined. You're not looking at an animation. This is real. Real craters, real light, real motion, captured from Earth with modern optics. We now know the moon has moonquakes, that its core may still be partially molten, that frozen water exists in permanently shadowed craters near the poles. These discoveries aren't just scientific milestones, they're logistical keys. Water means fuel, fuel means rockets, rockets mean exploration beyond. The moon is also becoming a target for communication relays, scientific observatories, and even space tourism. Its surface is silent, but the plans being made for it are anything but. As nations and companies race to return, we must ask, what do we protect? What do we preserve? Because while we've come to know the moon through data and lenses, it is more than a stepping stone. It is a world, and our relationship with it is just beginning a new chapter. Section 7. Future Horizons The next giant leap is already in motion. NASA's Artemis program aims to return astronauts to the moon, not just to explore, but to stay. Within the next decade, we may see permanent habitats at the lunar south pole. Engineers are designing inflatable modules, solar-powered rovers, and 3D printed shelters made from lunar dust. Why here? Because the South Pole receives near-continuous sunlight, and beneath its shadows, water rice, vital for drinking, agriculture, and rocket fuel, waits to be harvested. Private companies are joining in too. SpaceX, Blue Origin, and others are building the next generation of landers and transport ships. The moon could become a launch pad to Mars, a proving ground for deep space survival, and a host to observatories shielded from Earth's radio noise. But beyond the utility lies a deeper question. How do we maintain respect for such a unique environment? How do we explore without exploiting? 
as we prepare to touch the moon again, we are no longer doing so as pioneers. We are stewards, and with stewardship comes responsibility. We must learn from the past, on Earth and beyond, because the moon is not just our next destination. It's the start of something much greater.